Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name's Ashley and I am the mompreneur here behind A Crafty Concept. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these super cute, squishy, clouds for your feet slippers. This is a free crochet pattern that I'm providing for you guys here in this video and it is also on my blog at acraftyconcept.com. I will link that in the description below for you guys so you can find it quickly. The pattern includes nine sizes from toddler all the way up to a men's size. This video is going to be for the child size extra large because that is the size that I wear and it's easier for me because I can show you like pictures of what it looks like on a foot and stuff like that. I usually wear a child size three and the child size extra large slipper is the one that fits me the best. The blog post includes a couple charts to help you with the sizes. It will tell you like the, the size that I call it. So I call this child X large and it says it's mostly like a kid's two or three. So that's, that is on a chart for all of the different sizes along with like the starting chain and the dimensions of the sole or the dimensions of the top. So you can just make sure that you're keeping um, your tension the same as mine for the sizing. There's also a chart to help you find the right size slipper for your foot. It's a printable and you can just lay the piece of paper on the ground and put your foot on it and it will and see like which size does your foot touch on and then that's the size that you need. Um, these slippers are made tight so they fit on your feet tight but after about 20 minutes of walking around in them they will loosen up so if, if you put it on and it's like well this is really tight that's probably the size that you need if not you can always go up a size also you can go up a hook size which I will talk about that later when I show you guys the materials Speaking of materials, I did forget to mention that you will need a tapestry needle for sewing in your tails. So when you look at the materials list, um, tapestry needle, it's all linked down below too where you can find all the different materials that I've used. The pattern is linked below the blog post for the pattern, but also the $3 PDF version, which is an instant download through my Etsy shop. And that's if you want PDF printables of the charts, PDF of the pattern, and um, ad free so you don't have to fool with my ads or go to my website every time you wanna make a slipper because these are gonna make great gifts and you're gonna wanna make one for everybody in your family at Christmas time, but also Mother's Day gifts. Like which mom would not want some cozy squishy slippers for Mother's Day? Before we dive into this pattern, I just wanted to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more crochet patterns and mompreneur type videos, and also to subscribe to my newsletter over on my blog. My newsletter subscribers are my favorite humans in the world, and I send out weekly emails with just what's going on at A Crafty Concept, new free things that I have for you guys, but also every Wednesday I send out a free sheet of Handmade With Love wrap labels. There will be a sheet that's slipper themed. If you make some slippers, you can print out the Handmade With Love wrap labels and wrap it around your slippers for gifting or sending to your customers if you sell your crochet creations. Okay, enough of the boring bits. Let's go dive in and see what materials you need to make some crafty boho slippers. To make a crafty boho slipper, you will need Burnett Blanket Yarn. This one is in the color Terracotta Rose, um, and that's the color I will be using today. And you will be working from both ends at some point. So I have some pulled off the back of the skein here, but then also coming out the center pull here. And I will go over that more in the pattern. You will also need a seven millimeter crochet hook. This one is Clover brand. It is my favorite and I love it. If you want to go up to an eight millimeter crochet hook, that'll give you like between sizes, so half sizes. A pair of scissors and an optional measuring tape if you want to check your soles. And another optional thing is puffy paint. This is if you want to make your slippers slip resistant. You will need some puffy paint and all of these materials are linked in the description below and also throughout the blog post on my blog. You also need the pattern maybe to follow along for this video. You can find the pattern for free at my blog or for three dollars in my Etsy shop. Both are linked below in the description. In this video I'm going to be making the child size extra large. This is the size that fits my foot, so I'm able to show like what it looks like on a foot and stuff like that. So 
That's why we're doing this size, child size, extra large. It goes from toddler all the way up to a men's size, and all the different sizes are on the blog. I have my pattern pulled up here on the iPad where, so I can read it and make sure I'm making the video to go right along with the pattern. There's a lot of info on the pattern under the before you start section. This is also on the blog post. You might want to read over that if you plan on making these. And again, everything is linked below. So to get started, we're going to grab our 7mm crochet hook and our Bernat Blanket yarn says to make a slip knot and chain 16. So we're going to be starting with the sole of the slipper and then we'll make the top piece and then we will attach them. That's how this is made. So make a slip knot and chain 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Next it says starting in the back bump closest to your hook, single crochet 15. This is the back loop of the stitch. This is the front loop of the stitch. To find the back bump, you're going to twist your starting chain over and these little humps that are connecting this, the chains together, those are our back bumps. We're going to start in the one closest to our hook, so way over here. In a lot of crochet patterns, you skip the first one, but we will not be doing that. So we're going to put our hook under the back bump and put a single crochet there. That's one. We're going to do that till we get 15 all the way down the row. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then fifteen. Then we have one back bump left and we are going to put six single crochets in the same spot right here on the end. So we're going to go in the back bump just like all of the other stitches and we're going to put six single crochets together. One, two, three, four, five, Six. Okay, now that brings us around to this side of the starting chain, and the rest of our stitches are going to go down this way. And we're going to go for 15 more stitches until we get back over here to the beginning. So each row is going to be worked going up the, the one side, around the end, and then back down the other side. And then we'll chain our work and turn and do it all over again. Last one to go right there. Then we're going to chain one and turn our work. Okay, for the next row, which is just row two, I know that seems like a lot, but that was all row one. For row two, we're going to single crochet 15, increase in the next six stitches, and then single crochet 15 again. So we're going to single crochet back down this way. 15, 15. Now we're going to increase in the next six stitches. So that just means put two single crochets in the same spot. That's one. One, two, that's two. Three, four, 
five. Okay, and that's six, and then we've got 15 more to go back down the other side. Fourteen, and then the last one is going to go way down here. It's a little weird looking because we didn't chain up there, but it's going to go there for fifteen. Chain one and turn your work. For row three, we're just going to single crochet in each stitch around for a total of forty-two single crochets, and we are not going to chain one at the end of this row. Three, so you're going to want to count for because it's a little hard to see your stitches with this yarn, especially if you're not used to working with it. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Forty-one, and then the last one is 42 and we are not going to chain up after that one okay if you want you can go ahead and measure your heel I mean your sole at this point and the child size extra large I believe should be eight inches I will double check that and put it on the screen yeah eight inches so we're doing good my foot is eight and a half inches long and the eight inch foot, I mean <laughs> the eight inch slipper will stretch to fit my eight and a half inch foot. Now we are going to get started on the heel portion of the pattern. It says to single crochet three across the edge of your sole. Your first single crochet will go in the same stitch where you just single crochet your 42nd stitch in row three. Then for the other two, we're going to have to make our own spots. So we're going to put our first single crochet right in the same spot as this guy. That's one. And then we're going to do two more on the, the raw edge. So we have to make our own spots. I'm going to put one here. It really doesn't matter where, it, where you put them. As long as they just stay like on this half, the first half of the sole. That's one, and then we're gonna do one more over here for three. Now the pattern says to fold your sole in half in on itself hot dog style, so like this. Insert your hook into the last single crochet you just made. So the one you just made, you're gonna twist your hook around and go into that guy under both loops. And then we're going to insert our hook into the raw side of the slipper to the side that we hadn't put any single crochets yet and we are going to slip stitch. This part's a little weird so I kind of have to go through all three pieces one at a time and then get over here. There. That's a slip stitch. So to slip stitch you just pull through all the loops on your hook. Then we're going to go in the second single crochet that we put into the raw side of the sole Grab our yarn and pull through all for a slip stitch. And then into the, th the third or the first, it was the first single crochet we made, into the last little part of the sole, pull through all for a slip stitch. Now our sole has been joined together and we're going to chain up one. Then the pattern says to flip your sole, so your slip stitch seam is on the inside, so we're going to do that right there. Now the seam that we just made is on the inside of our slipper, and we are going to single crochet around the base of the slipper, and we're making like the sides now, and we're going to single crochet around for 42, because we have 42 stitches in row 3, but we're going to put them in the back loops only. So our first stitch is right here, this is where we joined. Our first single crochet is right here. We're going to go just into that back loop. 
So this would be under both loops. Let me show you because I know it's hard to see with this yarn. It's hard to do with this yarn. Okay, so that's under both loops. You can see it's got both. We're not doing both. We're doing just the back one, the one further from you. And we're going to put our single crochet right there for one. And we're going to do that all the way around two until we get 42 single crochets. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can see this little line that's being created. Those are your front loops that have not been gone through. And it's also bringing the side of the slipper up from the, like coming up to make a side. That's why we do it in the back loop. And now I lost count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and I'm gonna keep going all the way around until I get 42, but I'm gonna speed it up because you don't need to watch me count to 42. Okay, after I do my 42nd single crochet in the back loops, I'm going to insert my hook into the top of the first single crochet and join. And then I'm going to chain one. And that's that row completed. Next row says to single crochet 42 all the way around. So one in each stitch, then chain one. Um, we're going to do that again real quick. If you wanted to make a wide version of this, if any of the sizes, you would just do this row again. So the row that I'm doing right now, the row after, after the back loop only row, you would just do that again to make a wide version. This is the last row we're going to do for the sole, and then we're going to get started on the top of our slipper. And set this aside but if you needed a wider version just repeat this row and it will make it taller which will make it stretch more and fit a wider foot that was the easiest way to, to organize it so all of the sizes could be adjusted easily without having to rewrite a whole pattern for every single size Okay, after we get 42 single crochets, I'm going to join back into the top of my first single crochet, chain one, and now it says to set this aside and grab the other end of your skein to start making the top. So we're going to pull the, pull the loop out so that can be set aside. This is the sole, the finished sole, and we will set it over here and get my yarn out of the way and start working from the other side of the skein, which is a little bit harder to fool with because you have to unravel it differently, but grab your tail from the other side of your skein. Pattern says make a slip knot and chain 10. Starting in the back bump closest to your hook, single crochet nine. So it's made very similarly to the bottom piece. In the back bump closest to our hook, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine. 
then it says two single crochet six in the last chain space just like with the sole one two three four five six and then single crochet nine back down the other side one two three four five six seven eight and then nine chain one and turn your work row two says to single crochet and then bobble and repeat that around so single crochet bobble single crochet bobble and for this pattern with this yarn and this hook we're going to be doing a modified bobble stitch which is explained under the special stitches but i will show you that here in the video as well so we're going to start by putting a single crochet in that first stitch closest to our chain one and then we're going to yarn over insert our hook into the next stitch grab our yarn pull up a loop yarn over pull through two we're going to do that two more times all in the same stitch yarn over insert grab pull up yarn over pull through two that's two one more time pull through two and that's three now we're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops on our hook and then we're going to go straight into the single crochet. We're not going to chain first. We're just going to go right into the single crochet. Once I get right here, I like to pull on my working yarn because that tightens up my bobble and makes it pop out better and then just finish the single crochet as normal. And then we're going to do another bobble stitch right here. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's one two, three. We're just doing three instead of, I think four or five is a traditional bobble stitch because this, this yarn is just so bulky. Three is sufficient for a cute bobble. And then go directly into the next space for your single crochet. There you go. Now, when we get around to the other side, we are going to end with a single crochet instead of where a bobble stitch would need to be. So the last two stitches are gonna be single crochet, single crochet. And I do that because ending on a bobble stitch makes everything super wonky. And I'd rather just be one slightly off symmetrical wise. You can't even tell really. I do that for a lot of my patterns. But I'm just going to continue around making the bobble stitch and then the single crochet when I get to the end, we will be back. Okay, I am working on my last bobble stitch for this row. And then I've got two stitches left right here and those are both gonna be single crochets. So single crochet and then single crochet in that last stitch. And we're going to chain one and turn our work. Row three says to single crochet nine, increase in the next six stitches and then single crochet nine again for a total of 30. So starting in that first space next to our chain, I'm gonna go for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now we're going to increase in the next six stitches. So that's just two single crochets together. And with this yarn, it's a little hard. I mean, you can see the tops of the stitches. They're back there. It just looks a little fuzzy. So it's kind of hard to see. Sometimes you have to feel for them, but you can feel where the stitches, stitch holes are. Just gonna insert our hook into the stitch, put two single crochets in the same spot for one. We're gonna do that for a total of six times. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
three, four, five, that's six. Okay, now we've got around our toe. The increases just make it fit better. And we're going to end this row with nine single crochets back down the other side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we are not going to chain after that. So that is the top of our slipper so far. And we need to go around this edge right here, just like we did on the sole, making our own spots. And we're going to put seven single crochets across this end. We're gonna put the first two in the same stitch that we just put this guy in. So we're gonna put two more right in that same spot. So one, two, and then we're gonna do three, four, five, and then six, seven over here in this spot. And we have to make our own spots because it's a raw edge. So three, four, it's a little tricky, five, and then we're gonna put six, seven right in that spot right there. Six, seven, and then I'm just gonna adjust everything and we are going to join into the top of the first single crochet from that row. So right into this guy under both loops. Grab our yarn, pull through both for a slip stitch, and we are not going to chain here. Normally we would chain here, but we're not gonna do that. So measuring this is kind of hard because the bobble would take up some real estate. So I just go like this, lay it on top, and line up the bottom, and then squish it. So we're looking at about five and a half, five and a half inches for this guy. And there will be a chart on the pattern with all of the dimensions. So now we're going to grab our sole and we are gonna line up our top piece onto our bottom piece, just like this. But we need to match up the, the correct number of stitches so we don't have like a weird so this guy has 30 stitches on the out on the last bit, not counting these seven. And then this one has 42. So we need to center the 30 stitches around the toe right here. That's what we're going for. We are going to insert our hook into the back loop of this space right here where we just joined. So we joined under both loops. We're gonna go into the back loop only Maybe. Okay, there we go. Back loop only. And then we are going to set that down and we need to find the front loop of the seventh stitch from the end. So over here on the end, we have one, you can see this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're gonna be doing the front loop, which is the loop closest to us. And I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of pull that up. So I know that's where I need to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and count 30. We should line up right here. This guy should be 30. Cause see how they line up together, like across the way. So I'm gonna go over here and just count 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy up so I can see it. And see that doesn't, yeah, that lines up. So we're good. Those line up together. And that's how, and then we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, perfect. Okay. So we've got our hook in the back loop of the top. And then we're going to insert in the front loop of the bottom, the sole, and we're going to make a single crochet right there. 
single crochet, that's one. We're gonna have a total of 30 single crochets because that's how many stitches were on the top piece. So we're gonna go into the back loop of the top piece, front loop of the bottom piece. So this would be under both, we're not going under both. Going under the front one only. Do a single crochet for two. So just the back loop of this guy, front loop of this guy, and we're making sure to line them up. That's three. We're gonna do that all the way around. Back loop, front loop, that's four. Okay, I'm going to speed this up now. Okay, we're going in for the 30th stitch right there. And then you can see my top is centered on my bottom. There, stretch it out so you can see. And it's really important that you count for this row because it kind of looks like I need to do more over here, but that's not, that's the edge right there. Um, so make sure you count and don't get messed up because if I added another one, it would look wonky. Now we're going to slip stitch under, so we're gonna go under both loops of this stitch, the same spot where we just did our back loop only, we're gonna go under both loops, and then we're gonna go under both loops of the, the same stitch where we just did the front loop only on the bottom. So we're going under both loops and both loops of the exact same stitch we were just in for the 30th single crochet. We're going to make a slip stitch and then we are going to cut our yarn. Give yourself enough room to sew in your tails. Pull that through. Give it a tug. Okay, we are done with this, the top completely. Now all we have to do is make the ankle and then we're good to go. Well, then we gotta sew in our tails. So I'm just gonna stick that on the inside so it's out of my way a little bit. We are going to get started on the ankle. Insert your hook into the loop that we left over here with our working yarn previously. For round one, we're going to single crochet six. So starting right here, and we're going under both loops this time. One, two, three, four, five, Six. Now we are going to put one single crochet in the same spot where we just slip stitched with this guy. That, that little spot gets a lot of stitches. So one single crochet in there, still under both loops. Then we are going to do eight single crochets across the edge. So the first one is going to be right here. That's where the first one's going to go. So you just kind of kind of move your hook under both loops of that stitch and put your single crochet, kind of give it a tug so everything's nice and tight. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And for the eighth stitch, we're gonna go right here, which technically is either the join or the first stitch on the on the shoe, I'm not sure, but I've made this a hundred different ways and it looks best like this. So we're gonna go right there for our eighth, making sure it's nice and tight. Then we're going to put one stitch down here under both loops of the spot where we first started attaching the top to the bottom. 
under both loops, make a single crochet, make sure everything's nice and tight, and then we have six more single crochets to get back to the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a total of 22 single crochets all the way around. We're going to insert our hook into the top of the first single crochet to join. Chain one, do not turn. Now for round two, we're going to single crochet six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna do an invisible decrease over the next two stitches. To do an invisible decrease, we're gonna put our hook under the front loop of the first stitch, then whip it around and go under the front loop of the next stitch, and then complete a single crochet as normal. That just makes for a cleaner decrease. Then we are going to single crochet six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Invisible decrease over the next two stitches. So we're gonna put our hook under the front loop of the first stitch, twist it around and go under the front loop. Just kidding. Oh, There we go. Over the front loop of the second stitch. So I have two, two stitches with their front loops. Complete my single crochet as normal. And then we're going to single crochet six more times for a total of 20 single crochets. Three, four, five, six. Join into the top of our first single crochet and chain one. And for round three, we're just gonna single crochet one time in each stitch around for a total of 20 single crochets. Some of the other sizes have another set of decreases here. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Join into the top of our first stitch. And now we can cut off our yarn. Make sure to leave a tail long enough for sewing in. And go ahead and tie that off right there. Ta-da! There is our finished child size extra large crafty boho slipper. Now we need to sew in our loose ends and to do this you will need a tapestry needle. Um, I got this guy. He's he's really big but he's also super dull. <laughs> so um, makes it good for working with this uh, Burnett blanket yarn. I'm going to flip my slipper inside out so all of my tails are sewn in on the inside. I'll just start with this one and then I'll let you guys, I'll do the rest off camera so you don't have to watch me. So I just kind of pinch it with my fingers and then wiggle the tapestry needle over the little threads or fibers, I guess, and then pull it through. Make sure you got a good hold of it though or you'll just start pulling off little fibers. Pull it through and then to hide in my tails, I just go under these stitches here. And I just go all kinds of different directions. Pull it pretty tight so it's not got a big bump sticking out up there. And just do this until you feel like it's nice and secure. These slippers are machine washable and 
dryable if you don't make them slip proof. If you slip pr slip proof them, they have to they can't be dried. You can still wash them, but you have to lay fat lay flat to dry. There. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that one off and set this. Um, if you need a fun project with your tails, I have a really cool scrap yarn ornament blog post on my blog. I will link that in the description below as well. I'm going to sew in the rest of these tails off camera and then I will be right back. Now that I sewed in all the tails here on both of my slippers, I'm going to get the puff paint. I got this from Amazon and it is linked in the description. And I'm just gonna give it a good shake before I take the lid off. Okay, and I'm gonna take the lid off and I'm thinking I'm just gonna do dots on there, pretty good sized dots. Grabbed a piece of scrap paper so I can see how, how this comes out since it's my first time using it. Oh, that's nice. That's so dainty. The tip is so dainty. Like you could probably draw little funky designs on this. Okay, so let's start with just one of them. And I'm just gonna start putting little dots. And I don't think you can mess it up, honestly. I will probably speed this part up for you guys so you don't have to watch me tediously place dots. Okay, I'm almost done putting dots on this guy. I think I could probably put a couple more up here on the toe. And this paint comes in all kinds of different fun colors. You could get really creative with this. I think you're supposed to let it cure or whatever, let it dry for, this says 72 hours. So you gotta let it dry for four hours and then 72 hours before you wash it. Kind of looks like watermelon seeds. <laughs> but I will talk about this in a few minutes on the outro part of this video and let you know how it dried and how well it works. I hope you guys love this pattern and you love your new crafty boho slippers. I will tell you that I did try these slippy little nubs out and they work just fine for making these not slippy when you're on like hardwood or tile. Um, I haven't washed them yet but I will wash them today and make sure to put that in the blog post about um, these slippers. So you're gonna wanna check that out if you haven't already. Um, and I wanted to show you, I had to make like multiple of each size just to test this pattern out. Like it took me two weeks to figure it out. And if you follow me on Instagram and watch my Instagram stories and you saw all the trial and error that I was going through over the past two weeks. Um, but I wanted to show you a couple of the different sizes. This is the toddler size so cute and tiny. This is the size that my daughter wears. She is three, almost four. Then we have the child size small and you can compare. I haven't sewn in all my tails either, but you can see the different size comparisons here. And then there is an adult medium and this is a child extra large. So you can kind of see, I'm just kidding. This is an adult small, adult small, child XL, so you can see like they're really similar in size. Um, this one will just not be as tight when you first put them on. Then I have an adult medium. It's not focusing on, there we go. An adult medium and an adult large. And then I have a man size slipper. I made a pair of these for my husband. He loves them. And it, that, I think this is the only thing that I've ever crocheted him. And I've been crocheting for like the whole time that we've been together since I was 16. And I made him some slippers and he wears them every day and it makes me so happy. So I hope you love this pattern. If you are making slippers for people as gifts, comment below and tell me which gifts 
and which people you're making them for. I love a good gift idea um, and I love to use my skills as a crocheter to give handmade gifts to people in my life. So I would love to see your ideas for that. Be sure to check out the blog post that goes with this video and follow me on all of my social media accounts so you can stay up to date with everything a crafty concept. Instagram is my main jam. So if you want to get a hold of me or see what I'm doing every day, I post on my Instagram religiously. Um, I also have my Pinterest account, my Facebook page, and also we have the newly launched Ash and Tay Crochet Facebook page where me and my maker friend Taylor have joined together and started this group together as a community building type thing. So I'd love to have you over there as well. Again, links are in the description. Have a fabulous day.